Good morning. You're watching the Caffeinated Bible. And today we're going to do something a little bit different, but still sort of the same because of what's going on around our house today. It's going to make getting a video done rather tricky. If you've been following this channel for even a short time, you know that just a few weeks ago we had a severe windstorm here in Colorado and it snapped a 90 foot tall Douglas fir we had in our backyard off about 30 feet up in the air. The top part then flew through the backyard and landed on the back of our house. The past few weeks have been a parade of contractors. In fact, right now, you can hear them. We have a crew taking out a tree in our backyard and their saws have made it almost impossible to get a video done this week. So I'm going with plan B. The first thing we had to do was get the tree that fell on our roof removed from the backyard. After we got the tree that landed our house removed from the house and our backyard, we had a tough decision. We had these two beautiful firs in our backyard and we really loved them. They were tall, impressive, healthy, and they gave a lot of shade to our house. However, after the first one fell, our perception of its sibling changed. These were amazing, beautiful trees. They sat right in the corner of four properties. And the problem was, is that if the second one fell, no matter what direction it fell in, it was going to hit a house. And after consulting with an arborist, we realized it was pretty close to the end of its lifespan and it would be much safer to take it down now than to have it fall in the next five to 10 years. In philosophical terms, we had just undergone a paradigm shift. A paradigm shift is when our normal way of understanding or seeing something is challenged and replaced with a different way to look at the same thing. In this case, we no longer looked at our beautiful tree as an asset to our property, but a liability. The tree had not changed, but we saw it in a completely different way. We undergo paradigm shifts all the time. Most are pretty small. It's the big ones that are challenging. In terms of biblical interpretation, paradigm shifts can really change the way we understand God or read the Bible. You can see paradigm shifts within the Bible as well. The book of Job is one long paradigm shift from a theology of God rewards the righteous and punishes the wicked to who are you, old man? Where were you when I laid the foundations of the world? Who are you to question what God is doing? The gospel accounts are another great example. The whole idea that the Messiah would come as a poor baby, what we just observed during Advent and Christmas, live a life of basically homelessness, and then die as a criminal on a cross does not fit anyone's theology. And it still doesn't fit many ideas of the Messiah or the Savior today. Galileo and Copernicus introduced a huge paradigm shift from outside the Bible into it. Prior to them, the world stood at the very center of the universe. The sun, moon, stars, and planets all revolved around the world. When Copernicus argued that the sun occupied the center of the cosmos and the earth orbited around it, along with the other planets, he shook their entire understanding of the world and the cosmos. It was more than just a redefinition of what earth or planet meant. An entire constellation of ideas had to be reconfigured. Previously, they argued that the earth clearly was not moving. It was secure, solid, stable, the whole idea that the earth was spinning and revolving around the sun was sheer ludicrousness. This is one reason why Copernicus was originally ridiculed when he presented his theory and why Galileo was condemned as a heretic. The idea that the earth not only orbited around the sun, but revolved on its own axis each and every day was not part of their daily lived experience. Thomas Kuhn, who studies the history of science, describes it this way. The scientist who embraces a new paradigm is like a man wearing inverting glasses. He's confronting the same constellation of objects as before and knowing that he does so, he nevertheless finds them transformed through and through in many of their details. 
It's similar to this famous picture. What is it? Did you see a duck first or did you see a rabbit? It really depends on which aspects of the drawing you saw first. If you had seen it before, you might notice that the features resemble those of a rabbit, a round nose and ears. But then other features, the duck's bill and the rounded shape of its head are pointed out and you would see that the drawing represents a duck. The drawing has not changed, but how you read and understand the drawing are. In a similar manner, if a medieval scientist was asked what Earth was, Prior to Copernicus, he would have described it in terms of being the steadfast center of the universe, not a planet wandering through the cosmos. After the Copernican revolution, the same person would have replied that the world was a planet hurtling through speeds at incomprehensible speeds. Okay, I gotta look this up rather quickly here, just so I can get the facts straight. All right, according to Scientific American, the Earth is traveling at 67,000 miles per hour through space, and at the equator, it's revolving at 1,000 miles per hour. Almost incomprehensible because we don't feel that speed. The revolution that Copernicus introduced is one of only a myriad of semantic transformations that have occurred over the past 2,000 years. Ah, there they go again. I better go upstairs and see what they're up to. All right, they're making some pretty good progress on the tree. But I digress here. So what is the point of all this? Paradigm shift touch many areas of our lives. Biblical studies is just one of many. When the Copernican revolution took place, theologians were aghast. How can the world be hurtling through space? God sits enthroned in the heavens above, in the spheres above the earth. He is the unmoved mover, and the heavens are the unchanging, unmovable realm. And passages like Psalm 33, starting with verse 13, were thrown into question. The Lord looks down from heaven. He sees all the children of man. From where he sits enthroned, he looks out on all the inhabitants of the earth. For them, the unmoved mover was seated in the unmovable, eternal realms of heaven, and to suggest that the earth was hurtling through them and that the earth was not the center of the universe from which God looked down upon, but the sun was and we were revolving around it, was sheer heresy. The Bible didn't change, but how we understood the earth, the heavens, and the plants had undergone a remarkable transformation, one that you are part of this day. 
And this forced a rethink of how passages like Psalm 33 were interpreted. How we understand the world constantly changes. This means that the job of biblical interpretation will never be done, contrary to the lumberjacks outside. To simply rest on how we once understood the Bible will only push the Christian faith into some antiquarian corner and make it completely irrelevant. This is why I spent the better part of my life teaching and training future leaders in seminaries and graduate schools. Each and every generation must pick up the task of biblical interpretation. Each and every one of us is called to this challenge as well. Now, my wife and I need a paradigm shift for this very empty corner of our property. I think my wife will make this shift faster than me. She's already claiming it for a she shed or a greenhouse. Hopefully next week we'll have some peace and quiet around here so I can actually shoot a video. Until then, peace.